back to the to the office i should say i was getting ready to say welcome back to the shop um we finished the design phase of the gantry crane and now we're going to go ahead and do the simulation and after talking with my brother um and i kind of thought about this too the uh the uh, the square tubing that we're going to use is we're probably going to stick with the quarter inch wall three inch tubing um just for the heftiness of it and um it's not the price difference wasn't that much more so it just yeah, and it lent itself to where you weld it around the beam to where the three inch tubing is it just lit more surface area for the welds there so we're just going to stick with three inch um quarter wall if it doesn't do enough weight we might up the wall thickness to get us there but i think we'll have plenty so let's br let me bring up my center monitor here and we'll go ahead and open our design maybe and there so this is the gantry crane you know finally all designed out um it looks really good uh of course now my flying around doesn't want to work for some reason <laughs> The way it goes probably windows update anyway so here we go i'm going to hit shift in so you can see the component differences so all the angle braces all the uprights all the supports and all that's done so now we can go ahead and go into the simulation environment so this is all completed go back to our home view and you remember in the last when we did the design we went ahead and made a split face here so we'll have a place to do our simulation onto because the, all the weight's going to be bearing here you know on this area here so it might be a little wrong maybe i need to include all this in it too but i think i think this will do it right here so let's go over here to the design i'm mean, sorry the simulation area we're going to do a static stress and we're going to start a study and the first thing you do you just with any of the fusion stuff you just start left to right and work your way through it you know to do the study we already chose a new simulation study um, the materials are defined already in the, um, when we did the design to begin with, we went ahead and, um, um, determined what all the steel is and it's all a 36. That's what my supplier carries. And that's what that beam is made out of. So, um, fusion already knows what all those are. The constraints, we need to add the structural constraints. And this is where the, uh, place it's going to be fixed. And the bottom pads here are where the casters mount to so we're just going to use it so we'll do that we'll hit ok and now we need to do the loads we're going to add a structural load and they want to know what type it is we're going to do force and they want to know where we want to do it at so we have to select the two faces that we're going to do which are these two right here and then it wants to know how many foot pounds or how many pounds of force we're going to put on it and I don't know what should we put on there? I, I want to see, kind of see if it'll fail. So let's go high. Let's do 750 just for, you know, S and G. So we got that on there. And then we need to do the contacts. And this is where if something isn't quite lined up, it helps line it up. If Or if they're not mating, I should say, it helps line them up. And there's a lot of areas where I reckon you could draw the steel in square where it has good mating surfaces and all that. But you know i i didn't do it so and then we're going to generate the mesh and then hopefully this is green check mark comes up well it already is up so it was ready to go anyway so then once this is done maybe with the streaming software going i'm probably taxing my computer a little bit i don't know it only says 21 percent, so it's going to take its time i reckon so we'll wait for this to go and then we'll start the simulation. So everything's good to go. Got a green check mark. So let's solve it. And we're going to do it. You can do it on the cloud or you can do it locally. And I've got a pretty hefty computer. So we're going to try it locally here. And we're going to hit it to solve. And if it takes a little while, then, you know, I might scrub through this video and make it go a little faster. Or if I run out of something to talk about. And it's still only using 21% of my, I'm sorry. That's 21% of my GPU. My CPU is only 10%. So um, it's just taking its time. Yeah, but, we, you know, after thinking about it and looking at it, and when I redrew it with the two inch tubing, I was like, eh, it just it doesn't look appealing, to tell you the truth, because that S beam is three inches wide. So, you know, if only two inches wide, you have that the S beam sticking out over the edges and all that. The three inch beam just kind of lended itself 
and as a Harley comes roaring by the house, that S beam just lends itself to more, um, to a three inch shape or larger. So I think we just decided to go three uh, quarter wall and, um, we'll see how that goes. It's taking its sweet time. Um, simulating this, that's for sure. Or figuring it, calculating it. But so far, you know, if, if I've, if I'm doing something wrong, you know, with the simulation of course, the other one, I did the exact same way and it figured out almost to the T and we'll do the same thing with this one. We'll see what the deflection is. And after we build it, you know, we'll measure the distance in a fixed spot with no weight on it and then put the other weight on it. So even, <laughs> even though this is a very, very exaggerated view of what would happen because <laughs> it's a, just an adjusted scale, it's well within the safety factor of three to one. It's 9.7 to one. So if you change this fitting right here, let me zoom out a little bit and pan up here so you can see. So the safety factor is 9.7 to one, which we are, you know, you want to aim for three to one. So well within, well within it. So what this part down here, you can adjust it. You can do the actual deflection, which that's what it looks like. So, and then down here, you can change it from, oops, you can change it from safety factor to displacement. That's what we actually want to see what is moving. So according to this, with 750 pounds concentrated on right here in this eight inch spot, we should get 184 or what, 18 thousandths um, of deflection, which is, you know, nothing. So, you know, it should hold much more than that. So if we go to the stress areas, it'll show you the weakest point, the strongest point and the weakest points. So it's down here. I don't understand that, but anyway. I'm not an engineer, but to me, I think we're very much good to go. Now I want to see how much it'll actually do. So let's put a thousand on the thing. So we're going to go back over here, even though it might take a minute, um, to do the, uh, to do the actual calculations. We're going to change the loads here and we're going to edit it and we're going to change it to a thousand. Well, let's do 1250. That's a lot. So now that it's done, we need to just redo the simulation and we're going to solve it locally. So let's just do that and we'll let that run one more time at 1250. So already I'm very happy. I'm good to go with that. The only limitation to this design now is the casters. So with the casters that I bought, you know, they're, I think they were rated for four or 500 pounds each caster. So that'll be the limitation for this, which, you know, I feel we thought just looking at the design that it was going to be good for a, a thousand pounds anyway. And now I feel more sure that it is. So, um, if the, 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 the jib crane we did, you know, it sticks out 10 foot and, um, with 200 pounds on the end, it, it just deflects a little bit. It has bounce in it, you know, because, well, you know, you want it to be a, a little bendy. You don't want it to be so rigid because rigid stuff breaks. If you've ever stood on a bridge with trucks going by, you know, the thing moves, it moves a lot. So, um, we, you know, we knew that with that thing having 200 pounds, 10 feet out, we're only doing five or what, six feet here. And we should be able to get a lot more. We have supports on both ends. So we'll see what this one comes out to be. So I imagine this one's going to be much closer to the three to one. If not, it may fail because you know, you're adding you know, what two thirds more weight. So we'll see. It takes a minute for it to do the calculations evidently. So let's see. Well, it's still 5.82. So still, I like it. So we know, you know, that we'll never have any more weight than that on it. So, and like I said, the, uh, casters is what, what, what would, um, um, do the change the, or the, the casters is what, what would make is the weakest point of the design. Jeez. Can't even speak now. So, um, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to do three inch quarter wall. So let me go back over here to my design and just verify what I have in here. So we have, oh, we have two and a half inch is what I had in there. So let's change just the three. So, huh? So now let's see what we get. So I've changed that back. We're going to go back to, we're going to save it. And then we're going to go back over here. Of course, my, pan doesn't want to work again so let's 
bring out the old space mouse. So we'll put that there. We'll go back to the simulation. Um, regenerate the mesh. And then we'll retest it. Hopefully we get a green check. If not, the, we have to go fix that stuff, which I'm not keen on fixing anything. Because I'm slow when it comes to this kind of stuff. So hopefully everything turns green. We shall see. And it is green. So we're going to verify what our force was. So we have 1,250 pounds. And we're going to go ahead and calculate it and solve it locally. So now, I'm glad I went back and double checked that. Well, either way, it should be just as strong or stronger with the three inch in here. I don't see it getting any, any less stronger other than, um, the material spread out over a wider area. So you have, you could conceivably have a little less, um, rigidity with, uh, that in that web area or the span, the tube and span. Cause you're, you know, from two and a half quarter to three inch. So I don't think it's going to be significant. So let's go through this simulation one more time and we'll figure out what it's going to look like. Maybe. <laughs> this waiting. Like I said, I might scrub through some of this stuff if it takes a long time. And I'll, I'll, you, I'll put a little timer in the video so we'll know exactly what it looks like. Come on. It's thinking hard. Still only using 10% of the CPU. So... Which is not bad because I still have all the simulation software and it's great. It's fine. And actually this looks a little better. The, the weakest point is the bottom flange and the, uh, right here at this pinch point right here, which makes sense. If you have weight here, it's wanting to pull it apart here. So if you wanted to, you could put another scab on here, similar to what we did on the, uh, jib crane to get rid of that. Cause the weakest point on the jib crane, of course, you know, when you have, if you can imagine, let me slide over to the left. If you can imagine that your this support wasn't here, all the weight pulling down here, of course it's wanting to tear it out at the bottom or the top. So we added an eighth inch plate across this top here to do that. And this is showing the same stuff. But we're well within the safety factor that I wanted and well within the weight limit. So if we actually check the displacement, you know, it's it's only what twenty six thousand. And that's nothing. So I don't even well, we'll try to measure that. I'll get some weight on the end of it and or weight on this uh, when we get it built and we'll put a dial indicator up on the top mounted on the ceiling and we'll measure that. So we'll, we'll see how accurate this thing is. So, but I'm still very happy, happy with the design, happy with how everything turned out, very happy with the simulation. So now I got to be happy and go get the material and build the thing so we can get the lathe put together. So. I think this has gone on long enough. You get the gist of it. If 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 I did anything wrong, let me know. Because I really, really like doing these simulations when you're doing metal that you're going to have weight on or any kind of fabrication where you're going to have metal on. I, I really enjoy doing the simulations, but I'd like, to, if I'm doing something wrong, I would really, really like to know. Matter of fact, I might send this file to uh, um, Lars Christensen just so he can take a look at it and see if I'm doing the simulation part correctly or not. I might do that, and then I'll share the results with you here. Um, I met him a couple years ago at um, uh, John Saunders' open house, so um, I'm, I think I will send that file up there to him, and, and maybe he can talk something about the simulation because because if I'm doing something wrong, I really want to know about it. So he can before I build it, he can be my um, final word in it. All righty, so let's see what else we got going on. Um, let's see, work as busy as normal. Um, shop work is slowed down mainly because of the heat and I'm trying to get the shop roof done. So still gathering materials on that. I've got about 50 more two befores to get. So for the rest of the scabbing, um, picked out the material. So this is the color of the roof right here. And then I am planning on doing the front too. So my, my building is cinder block, but, um, I think I'm going to reskin the front, at least the front of it in metal. And so it'll be a black roof. So it'll look like this, something like that. Black roof with um, green trim and I mean green paneling in the front and black trim. So those are my colors. Let me flip them back around so you can see them. So I think that's what we're going to do. My wife approved it. So 
Um, if you live in, you know, the mid Carolina area or just above Charlotte, the Tin Man here in, in Salisbury is a good place to get stuff. It's a family owned business and they make all the pieces there and they cut all the metal and they bend it all. So big roll stock. And if I can think about it, when they're making it, I'll go in there and uh, take the camera in there and, and show how it does. It's pretty neat going through the form roller, um, bending up the, the uh, metal for the roof. They hand bend all the, uh, all the uh, what do you call it, the trims and stuff. So they bend all that. So anyway, this has gone on long enough. So until we get the metal or we start do something in the shop, hopefully in this weekend or whatever, we'll see you next week. See ya.